All right, so check this out. I had just recently purchased my house and my old washer and dryer wouldn't fit. And plus, they sucked and my wife hated using them. So, she sent me on a mission to buy a new set. I didn't do my research and as I'm standing in the Lowe's appliance department coming to grips with what I'm up against, my contractor neighbor walked up behind me. He helped me pick out the exact units I was going to purchase. I bought them and then life got weird for a few minutes. When I got to the truck with my two large boxes, there stands my neighbor waiting for me. I thought he was waiting to help me load them, but he just looked at the boxes and said something like, that's a gas dryer, we don't have gas. I bust his balls for a couple of minutes about helping me pick the wrong units out, and it was as normal an interaction as I could have had. I went inside to do the return walk of shame on the items I literally never even left the parking lot with. My neighbor walked to his truck. I'm at the return counter and the girl behind the register asks me my name. I told her and handed her my receipt from five minutes ago while explaining the situation. Without even looking up at me, she says again, name? I tell her my name for a second time and she says nothing while typing into the computer. In comes my neighbor to the return desk with a gallon of paint. He waits in line behind me, saying nothing. The girl behind the register looks up at me and says, Name, sir? I tell her my name now for a third time, pointing to the receipt on the counter, and try to explain the situation again. She types into the computer some more, and for what was probably a solid minute, says nothing at all. Another girl at the return desk finishes with another customer, and comes over to help. The new girl says to me while they both stare into the computer screen, name? A fourth time, I give them both my name. Without taking their eyes off the screen, the new girl says, and I shit you not. I'm sorry, sir, but you don't exist. I got sort of lightheaded after she said that because I was already thinking about how strange this was. I said back, I don't exist or I'm just not in your system. Without answering me, the second girl says to my neighbor, Sir, I can help you over here, and moves to the next register as my neighbor walks past me, and without another word to me, returns his paint and then walks out the door. Then, almost as if nothing weird had happened, the first girl just says, My name, here's your return. You'll have to purchase the new ones and we'll refund you the ones you mistakenly purchased. Without even going back to appliances, there behind me stands a guy with the units I needed on a dolly ready to help me buy and load them into my truck. My neighbor was gone, but when I asked him about it, he didn't think there was anything weird about any of that. I, on the other hand, had an existential crisis and only barely managed to hold it together. This person added an edit to include... I understand it's in people's nature to disbelieve me, but it happened exactly like I said. I'm not going to argue in the comments, so take it as you will. If I was going to fabricate a story, it would have had lasers and explosions, not a trip to Lowe's to buy a washer and dryer. I keep a small plastic grocery bag next to me on my bed for used tissues, gum wrappers, empty vapes, and things like that. Every day or two I throw it away and I get a new one. My bed is too big for the room and there's no room on either side. One side has the wall and the other side has my dresser. It won't even fit a small waste basket. In my haste this morning, the bag, which is a yellow Dollar General bag, evidently slid off my bed and landed on the floor. I needed to get going and needed an ibuprofen before I left to stave off my chronic back pain, so I got it out of my medicine box on top of my dresser and went to put it in my mouth. The yellow Dollar General bag I'd been using for bed trash was lying flat on the floor. Now this is important. I went to put the pill in my mouth and as I still had it in my fingers, I dropped it and I heard it land on the bag. I leaned down to pick it up and I found that I couldn't. So I went to pick up the bag and, well, the pill was inside the bag. And when I say this isn't possible, I mean 
there's just no way. It was lying flat. There was no opening on the top even. I inspected the bag for holes and there were none. How in the sweet Kentucky Fried glitch did my pill morph inside the bag? Something else weird happened in my bedroom last week too, and a few months ago, yet another oddity. But this might be the craziest one yet. My friend is joking that my bedroom is a portal to another dimension, and I'm beginning to wonder because, really, WTF... This morning, while I was opening the restaurant at which I acquire currency, I went to get a sifting basket out of an ice tub that has two bars in it, that way you can put smaller containers with ingredients and such into the ice. Upon first glance, my head had an issue with the way this basket was sitting in the tub due to the fact that it was sitting down inside of it. It didn't seem right because of the size of the sifting basket. I went to pull the sifting basket out of the tub and was unable to pull the basket out because the size was bigger than the hole it went into, and I tried to turn it long ways and still, the hole was too small. I turned this thing every way possible and try all three holes available to get the job done. After a while, I went and got my manager to see if he could get the damn thing out. And keep in mind, the night crew who cleans kind of just slings things close to where they go so this was an acceptable place for it to be. He continued to try and pull it out and turn it around and twist it and yada yada yada. He then lays it down and pulls his phone out to try and get pictures to show someone that the basket is stuck and was going to get a screwdriver to take the bar off. But as he's pulling his phone out of his pocket, he then pulls the basket out of this undersized hole and I was watching him and he didn't change the angle of the basket he changed nothing other than the fact he no longer had any issue pulling it in and out of what is now an oversized hole. He didn't unscrew anything, and that's why he was going to take the picture to explain why we're taking so long to open this section. He looked at me and said he was trying to focus the camera, and when it did, he saw that he could just pull it out, and so he did. I was looking at the basket on the opposite side that was now short enough to pull and angle it out. He also stated that he felt like he went through a loading screen while trying to get his camera to focus. Way back in 2004, I was living with a friend in England. We used to go walking in the countryside, out in the fields and all that. And one time we were out walking, we spied a mini forest type thing towards the edge of a field. Curious, we went over to it. As we approached, we noticed a little pathway or gap in the trees, so we followed it. As we went along the trees, the pathway became like an archway, as if the trees were growing into the perfect shape over the path. This went on for ages, maybe half an hour. Eventually, we saw daylight at the end, so we powered on along and made it out of the exit into open air. Outside looked like normal countryside, with the exception of a strange settlement before us. It looked like the buildings were made out of junk, like wooden junk, I guess. There were tiny people, four foot tall, maybe five foot max, and everyone was wearing rags. They were all muddy and unkempt. They stared at my friend and I like we were aliens from another world. There wasn't a road, just a muddy path through the center of the buildings, no power lines, nothing modern. While standing there, I suddenly had this feeling that I had to leave. I said to my friend that we had better go, so we went back the way we came. It was a pity that this happened in 2004, since we didn't have any modern cell phones on hand that we could just take a picture or a video with. Anyway, we went back and discussed it a few times in the intervening months, Eventually, I couldn't stand it anymore and convinced my friend that we had to go back with the digital camera. When we returned, we found the trees and the entrance, but when we followed the path, it only lasted a few minutes and we emerged into another field. A normal field. We walked the perimeter of the trees, turned out to be just a little square of undeveloped, unused land in the middle of four fields. No archway, 
no village. Suffice it to say, there was no point in taking photos of that. I'm convinced to this day that if we hadn't left when we did, we would still be there, wherever or whenever there is, and we would have ended up on another missing persons report. I jumped timelines in a car accident. So this happened when I was fresh 18. I'm now 24. At the time, I was living in Florida with my dad and stepmom, and my now husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, was in jail with no chance of getting out. The day of the accident, I had gotten into an argument with my dad. He told me I had to leave the house, so the plan was that I was going to stay at my boyfriend's parents' house until I could get on my feet. So I left my dad's house in Florida and started on my way to Georgia. I did have a feeling not to go, and the signs were always there. I just ignored them. Like when I stopped at a gas station and left my keys in the car for two hours. Still, those two guys who got through the window for me, bless them. They were working, doing Uber, and stopped to help. Anyways... I was traveling the back roads from Florida and Georgia. I made it to Albany when a wave of anger and sadness hit me. Maybe I knew what was about to happen. I couldn't stop crying when I noticed I passed the first stop sign at a four-way. I told myself I had to slow down, but by the time the next four-way came, I turned to look out the driver window and I saw an 18-wheeler coming for me. Now this is where things go absolutely wrong. I remember vividly seeing an 18-wheeler approach me, my vision cut, probably just from the shock, so I never felt the sensation of being hit. But when I woke up, I was over half a mile spun out down the road, and someone was trying to give me water. The space between the driver's side door and the middle console was about an inch and a half. That's where I was sitting, so when EMTs came, they had to pull me out of the passenger side door, and it wasn't until I got on the stretcher that I felt everything, and I couldn't breathe. On the way to the hospital in Albany, I just remember saying that I can't breathe a thousand times. When I got in the hospital, they immediately put me in the SICU because I had a hole the size of a softball in my lung, and glass was sitting in it. My pelvis, my tailbone, and my entire left side of my ribcage was broken. I remember telling the nurses to call my mom, my dad, and my in-laws. My mom lived in Louisiana at the time, but she drove from Louisiana and Georgia. That was all I heard before going to sleep in the SICU. The next cognitive memory that I have is waking up and my mom being there. I had apparently slept for three days and I was still in the SICU. When I woke up, the doctor and nurse came in, and they let me know that my lung had closed up miraculously overnight, seemingly, and that my fractures aren't too bad to heal from, and that I was lucky to be alive. I asked about the glass in my lungs. Doctor didn't know what I was talking about. I asked about the broken ribs, the pelvis, and the tailbone, and he said that they had always just been fractures, I asked about the accident. It wasn't an 18-wheeler, it was a Dodge Ram with a massive grill in the front. I was in shock at this point. I spent 11 total days in the hospital that was difficult to walk on fractures. I stayed with my mother for a month while I recovered, until somehow my now husband was eligible for bond. I never asked questions, but I moved in with him the same day he was released and we've been married ever since August 2016. Minor things are different now and then. My mom doesn't remember a lot of what I do growing up, but my father, in this new reality, had a terminal illness. He had gotten a plastic anemia, which very quickly turned into leukemia. He died within seven months, and that breaks me. It was extremely fast onset and makes me beg the question, was it a life for a life? I probably died, once if not twice, and to restore the balance, a life had to be taken.
I've had a couple of odd experiences, but this is probably the strangest one. This happened back in October of this year, so it was a Saturday night around 5 p.m., and I went to the liquor store that's around a 15-minute walk from my house. As I'm walking, I wait at the intersection to cross the street. I notice inside one of the cars the people inside look exactly like my cousin and his girlfriend. The thing is, it wasn't them, and they actually were out of the province at the time. I was speaking with him earlier that day. I just chalk it up to me being tired. Anyway, I cross the street, and as I'm outside the liquor store, there's a guy standing outside that looks just like my uncle, only slightly different features. Same mannerisms and everything, though. I actually said hi to him, and he just nodded. He lives around an hour away from me, so there's really no reason that he would be where I'm at. At this point, I honestly start to get a little weirded out. I enter the store and I look around and I notice a guy that looks exactly like one of the guys I went to school with. And I don't mean just a little bit, I mean he looked like an exact replica of him. The only difference was this guy was maybe around 30 or 40 pounds heavier. I actually ended up saying hey to him, but he looked confused and just nodded at me. Now, I'm starting to think I was going crazy. I pick up a bottle of tequila and some Heineken, and I'm waiting in line. I waited about five minutes and finally got called up to pay, and now I'm paying on the register furthest to the left, and there's a giant mirror where you can see behind you. I glance in the mirror and I see another guy that again looks exactly like a co-worker of mine, except slightly different features. At this point, I just ended up speed walking home. The odd part was that something felt off on the walk home. Things just seemed different. You could just chalk this up to me being tired, however following that experience for maybe the next four or five times that I walked in that area. I've experienced the same thing. I'd see a replica version of somebody that I knew. The next time I went, for example, I saw a woman that looked exactly like my aunt, who again, wouldn't be in the area anyway as they live in a different city. Scenarios like this have happened almost every time I go to this area. Has something like this ever happened to you? There was always a weird feeling in the air when I would walk there, like a strange feeling that I can't describe. About 12 years ago, I had to move back in with my mom. I was living in a bedroom at her house, sleeping on a bunk bed. And at the house, my mom had one of our childhood cats still alive, but the cat was very old. We actually put her down not long after this story took place, but that's not related. I had just gotten home, it was the afternoon, and decided I was going to go and lay down on my bed. So I went upstairs, closed my bedroom door, laid down and got comfortable and put the blanket over my head. I hadn't been laying down even two minutes, so I wasn't drifting in and out of sleep or anything. I felt the cat jump up on my bed and then felt her take two or three steps along my side on top of the blankets that were over me. She usually didn't come into my room, so I said, Cat, what are you doing here? And pulled the blanket off of my head and looked down to where the cat should have been, but she wasn't there. My door was still closed. And there was no sign that anything had been walking next to me on the bed. So I got up to get out of bed, went back downstairs, and the cat was asleep on the arm of the couch. There aren't any other creatures in the house at the time, and like I said... It didn't look like there was anything that had disrupted the blanket that was laid out over top of me. I had been laying down long enough that it wasn't the blanket settling either, and it distinctly felt like a cat stepping gingerly across a blanket. And you know that feeling. Here's the TLDR. Was that a ghost cat, or was my cat walking on my bed with her subconscious? I don't know if this counts as a glitch, but i just like to share this weird experience that I had years ago. I've only told my girlfriend and a few of my close friends about this, and I was browsing through this subreddit and remembered the experience. 
so I was commuting on my way to my university. I ride a total of three times to get to my destination, so on the first ride, I saw this kid walking by the sidewalk. He has a white birthmark all around his left eye area. I think he was homeless because he was walking without any slippers or shoes on and his shirt was worn and tattered. I was wondering why there was a kid walking on the highway, but I immediately shrugged it off. By the time I got to my second ride, I saw him again, but this time he's in the vehicle with me. I figured it's the same kid because he's got the same birthmark on his eye, he's shoeless and his shirt was still torn. I got so baffled because thinking about it, the time frame where I saw him first and by the time I'm on the vehicle, it's like a 10 or 15 minute distance and that seems impossible to get to by walking. I remembered taking a picture of the kid because I thought he was a ghost, but hey, I got the picture so I shrugged it off again and just thought that I was seeing things. Minutes later on the ride, the kid eventually went out of the vehicle and started walking again by the sidewalk. By now I'm on my third ride. I'm riding a train, so I'm on my way to the station, and I was so shocked to see the same kid with the birthmark again near the station, but he was just sitting by the stairs this time. I walked past him, and I never looked back because at this point I was actually scared. I'm really trying to think of a reasonable explanation, but I, I'm struggling. So, does anyone know who or what I saw? This happened many, many years ago, but I've been telling the story ever since, and I thought it would be fun to share and to hear what people think really happened. So, here it goes. I was visiting stores with a dear friend on a weekend. We hadn't seen each other in quite some time because we didn't go to the same school. And we were very loudly catching up and just talking nonstop. Now, mind you, we used to go to this store almost always and we knew the way by heart and we could get there without ever really paying much attention. We left the store and walked to the subway. We entered the subway, paid for the ride, walked to where our train would stop and because it's a two-way train, imagine north and south, and we needed to take the one going south. Again, we knew this way by heart since almost every weekend we would go to this store. The train arrives, we take the train, and we were still very much into our conversation, but there was a combination, and they always announce it on the speakers. The combination was three stations before where we had to get down. We didn't even need to combine. We hear the announcement, and we keep chatting because it's so fun, right? And I don't even remember what we were talking about, but that's not really relevant. The next thing we hear is the announcement of the same station that we took the train from. Let's call it Station B. So, Station B doesn't have an announcement because it's not in a combination. We're surprised because no one's reacting. We're at the same station that we took the train first, but we did hear station combination and we did move several stops. Before the doors close, we get down speechless and all of the loud conversation has died. We looked at each other and we were in the exact same spot that we took the train about 20 minutes ago, maybe less. Without saying a word, we changed from south to north. We took another train and saw every name from every station until we reached our destination. We got down and never really knew what happened. What is curious is that they never said anything on the speakers. We have many trains in my city so you can't just move the direction of a train or a collision would happen within minutes. You'd have to change the direction of the entire city, which of course, not possible. No one else in the train seemed to be affected by the situation. Nobody else was like, whoa, what happened? The train's going backwards or something. To this day, I don't know what it was. We also weren't on any substances or alcohol. It was the middle of the day, very sunny, and I wasn't alone. My friend still also remembers that this happened to us. But what do you think caused this? All 
I'm going to do something very out of pocket for a minute. I, you know I don't normally swear super hard on this channel, but uh, if you've got young kids in the room right now, um, change that. Dude, I got some fucking banana bread at work today, dude. Hell yeah. My mom told me that if I wait for things, like, good things will happen to me, dude, and I fucking waited for some things, and I got some banana bread at work today, dude. Hell yeah. So, it just goes to show that waiting for things is, like, worth it. But there's a lot of bad things in this world, dude. Like, fucking skunks, dude. Hell no. Scratching your eye, but it's still fucking itchy, dude? Hell no. The fucking cubs, dude? Hell no. Like, getting paid, not a lot of money, dude, for fucking working? Hell no. But banana bread? At fucking work, dude? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. Banana bread, bro? At, at fucking work, dude? Hell yeah. 